very professional dodo asks hey there gents i come to you with a controversial question currently finishing final fantasy 16 and i'm struck with how consistently beautiful everything is this is clearly a game made with 30 fps in mind and i feel they got a lot of juice out of 33 milliseconds should we be quote unquote happy for games that target 30 fps since that would mean we are now reaching the era where current gen is really being pushed hard cross-gen games that run at 60 are great at all but maybe we should be thankful that we're now getting experiences that could only run on a ps5 or xbox series consoles curious to hear your thoughts exclamation point i think we've made our thoughts on this one pretty clear in the past but i guess the latest examples hellblade 2 oliver which you took a, a, a close look at yeah um mm-hmm. what, what, what do you think about that do you think it could be run out of 60 do you think um it, it's um actually an ex- a good example of a game that does run at 30 and we should be grateful for it Hellblade 2, I think it's just a question of what the CPU side of things looks like. If it can actually, yeah. you know, if there, it's not so bad by single-threaded performance that it could run at 60 FPS on what is effectively a cut-down Ryzen 5 3600. Um, if so, then of course uh, 60 FPS could be a possibility. I think there'd be some question about whether it would be worthwhile from an image quality perspective, given mm. that the game is, does seem reasonably heavy, uh, like a lot of other UE5 titles. Maybe it wouldn't look so good. It might be okay in the Series X, but certainly in the Series S, it wouldn't be very good, I couldn't imagine. I do think with the power of these consoles that achieving 60 FPS in a lot of titles should be achievable, and I think it should be the kind of thing that should be the standard still. That's still my expectation. But I think if you're pushing a state-of-the-art that 30 FPS should always be a possibility, and that might be better suited to certain game types over others. And I also just think it opens up more possibilities in the PC because you have a 30 FPS console title like Hellblade 2, on the PC, again, presuming CPU performance isn't a huge problem, it should be possible to push it to high frame rates on PC. You get uh, better image quality, you get various enhancements over that base game, whereas if it was targeting 60 FPS on consoles, the PC enhancements might not be quite as convincing, um, and the PC version might not be quite as compelling when pushed to the limit on a high-end PC. So I always think there's room for 30 FPS titles, and I do think to some degree it does indicate the end of cross gen because 60 FPS was a little bit of a a marker of titles that maybe were not so ambitious on the CPU side of things in particular, which we did see with a lot of cross gen titles. Right, Alex, I agree with everything Oliver just said, and yeah, I think it is being happy. I mean, I don't know if you should be happy, but 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 you'll you know. It's it's just a marking of the times. I look at um, that Marvel. It's not 1940. What, what year is it? Marvel, 1943. 1943. Yeah, Marvel <laughs> 1943. I don't see that running at 60 FPS based on that little presentation. I mean, it's just a cinematic presentation. It doesn't show enough any of the gameplay. But those cinematics, I really can't imagine them running at 60 FPS. Um, they just looked really, really good. Especially, you know, they showed off that really cool uh, volumetric sim of a barrel. And that looked really good. And I can't imagine that running at 60 FPS at a, a reasonable resolution where the developers... That's another thing, like, you can push... So perhaps there's games where the the CPU can actually... is There's enough breathing room there with some nicks and tucks as well on top of the 30F presentation where they could get it to a, a reasonable 60. But then, like Oliver said, maybe the, the resolution degradation that would occur as a result of that might not be worth it or it may have knock-on effects to things like the game is using uh ray traced uh reflections and or ray traced uh gi we're bumping those things the resolution down to a certain level where they're already for example they're like if you're running rtgi on a console it's already quarter res it's going to be already quarter res and what if that's quarter res of 1080p but what if it's quarter res of 540p like you're you're yes. gonna be having issues at that point of actually like convergence. So there's so even if it's technically possible on a GPU, it may not be worth what it does to the image at the end. So developers yeah. may say, let's just not do that. Absolutely. I mean ultimately 30 FPS has been a part of console gaming for a very, very long time. I mean Ridge Racer came out in 1994, it's 30 FPS, 60 in the arcades. Um ultimately, if you want to push visuals hard on a fixed platform, and we've said this so many times now, something's got to give. And um, 30 FPS is an acceptable compromise for a mainstream box with fixed resources, right? You know, it's it's never going to be as powerful as the most powerful PC. Um, therefore, developers have to adjust their design targets. And 30 FPS can be absolutely fine. 
Um, I mean, Forza Horizon 5, I kind of prefer playing that at 30 FPS on the Series S, so Series X rather, because you gain so much over the 60 FPS in terms mm-hmm. of uh, in terms of the presentation in so many respects. Um, and I guess Final Fantasy 16, I think, you know, that, that, that did seem to be a game that was built for 30 and had a 60 mode kind of clutched on at the end that just wasn't that great. Um, I think ultimately, you know, if you want to push the state of the art, you've got to accept that calculating all the rendering is going to take longer. And 30 FPS is therefore the acceptable compromise. Um, yes, so whether we should be happy about it, I don't know, but it's just the reality of game development. 